So Kevin, hi. Good to see you, man. Finally. Good morning, brother. How you doing, dude? Yeah, good, good. Thanks. I follow you on LinkedIn. I'm really impressed with your post, um, especially your post on uh, mindset and uh, decision fatigue and routines. And um, I've come to realize that fitness is more of a mindset change and it starts in the mind and then it, it moves on to the body. And uh, yeah, so I do read a lot of your posts and I wanted to get you on this uh, um, small chat where we can discuss. So essentially, um, you are a fitness behavioral change coach who helps uh, busy men in corporate lose uh, 20 pounds. And I've seen the results on your page. It's definitely more than 20 pounds. And then they put on a lot of, they become lean and they put on a lot of muscles. So uh, without, without uh, giving up the things that they love. Can you can you go more on this and describe what exactly is the journey that when do these men they come to you when you coach them, what's the journey that you uh, take them through? For sure. So obviously, everybody uses their LinkedIn profile as their highlight reel. So yeah. the gentleman that happened to be highlighted on my banner at the moment, those results clearly took far longer than just the twelve weeks, but what we do is what I do in the, in the behavior change program is we use those 12 weeks to create a stronger foundation, okay. reset the beliefs that kind of led the individuals down the path of an unhealthy lifestyle in the first place okay. and build these routines that they can rely on for the long term. So restriction isn't the way to go. Extreme exercise isn't the way to go. Spending hours and hours and hours in the gym isn't the way to go, but finding how nutrition, hydration, rest and recovery, and just movement fit into a lifestyle that you look forward to. Yeah. That's the fountain of youth. That's the goal to get everybody to. And it's very, very unique and different for each person. So there is no cookie cutter approach. Okay. One of your posts speaks about uh, the treadmill, you know, you get off the treadmill. And uh, I, I enjoyed that post. And you spoke about four steps of uh, losing weight and metabolism. And uh, can you just quickly run us through that? For sure. So society leads us to believe that you can exercise your way to weight loss. And sure, exercise is a very co important component, but I like to boil it down to the to the real foundation of the science of weight loss so that people have the tools to make decisions for themselves and they don't find themselves handcuffed to the treadmill trying to outrun a bad diet. So in that post, I illustrated that our body burns calories in four different ways. Your BMR, your basal metabolic rate is just the amount of calories that your body requires on a daily basis to have organ function. And this number really relies on how large you are. And the only control we have of increasing basal metabolic rate is to add more muscle mass. So the cool thing is by resistance training and adding muscle mass, it's almost like investing in an asset that pays yeah. you while you're not even working. So that's our biggest one. It's like 70% of the calories you burn in a day are just like behind the scenes happening without your effort. The next biggest stone that I encourage all my clients to really focus on is called NEAT, N-E-A-T non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And that's what I'm doing right now. Standing up at my stand-up desk, talking with my arms, shivering a little bit because the windows are open. These behaviors over the course of 16 hours in a day burn way more calories than you could hope to sustain in the gym. So yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, if I went and did a triathlon right now, I'd probably burn more calories today doing that triathlon than just standing at my desk. However, if we look at over the course of a week, a month, a year on average, people burn triple with just non-exercise activity than they do with exercise. And that's really where the difference that I want to highlight is, is if you're a really busy executive and you think, I don't have time to, to take my wife out to dinner. I don't have time to play catch with my kids. How the hell am I going to have time to go to the gym and lose weight? You don't have to. You just got to get creative about moving your body. But anyway... BMR, 70%, NEAT, N-E-A-T, just movement throughout the day, 15%. And these are rough estimates and they vary person to person. Then 10% is coming from actually digesting food. It's 
It's called TEF, yeah. thermic effect of feeding. So <clears throat> the only way to really change this is to create a higher ratio of protein. Our body burns like 30% hotter when we have to metabolize protein than it does fat and carbs. So more protein actually helps with that. And then the last thing is exercise. And out of all of our tools at our disposal, exercise is actually the weakest tool to burn calories. And I highlight that. Number one, it's great for business because people don't want to spend hours on the treadmill. You, but you, number you mean, two, when you say exercise, do you mean cardio or do you mean exercise in general? Exercise in general. Okay. Yeah. Exercise in general is not a strong tool to burn calories and lose weight. Now, behind the scenes, a lot is going on hormonally that exercise really contributes and helps out. But for face value, it's not doing a lot of calorie damage yeah, in the moment. We, we, we are talking about losing weight, becoming leaner. But what about mm -hmm. energy and, um, you know, having more energy to, to do things and, you know, becoming more, adding more muscle mass. So with this, you have to exercise, you have to, um, so it's not only about losing weight, you have to put in the work at the gym with these, with these machines or at home with these push-ups and pull-ups. So uh, how would you reconcile both where you, you need this energy? Like as you grow older, you lose more muscles. And uh, one of the three reasons for, as, as people get older, the reason they die is one, by falling. By falling is one of the, one of the top three, which essentially is, essentially is loss of muscle mass. So how do you reconcile, you know, it's not like, it's not only about losing weight, but what about more energy? Like how do you how do you get that into the framework? I couldn't agree more, and that's such a, a valuable differentiation to highlight. I spent a decade as a personal trainer selling nothing but the fitness side of things, and I love it. It's the focal point of people's really healthy lifestyle. It's because of the gym. It's because of the workouts that people are willing to kind of manipulate their other, you know levers as you will for a healthy lifestyle so really the distinction that i like to make is the mindset behind it yeah but what i find is if an individual is only working out as a means to weight loss they're going to stop working out yeah. for one of two reasons they're either going to abandon working out because they achieved their weight loss and now i don't need to do the workout anymore because i've gotten to my weight loss and then they throw it in the garbage or they're gonna stop working out because they're frustrated. I've been working out like crazy for a month and I'm not losing weight. Let me throw this out. So my approach to, I guess you could say, talking shit about exercise as it pertains to weight loss is more so to bring more respect to exercise. We should be respecting exercise for the fact that it yeah. increases muscle mass, increases bone density, quickens foot speed so that that falling as you age doesn't occur. I, so I get it. So, I mean, don't link exercise only to weight loss. Ex exercise is important, but it's much more about much more than just weight loss. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Hormonal regulation, energy, fulfillment yeah. of life, changing of the physique. Like, yeah, it, it it's the fountain of youth. Yeah. But it's not the key to weight loss, and that's where I see people getting a really bad relationship with exercise and ending up hating it. Yeah. Because it's almost a punishment hmm. when exercise should be the key to, to a valuable life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, what kind of changes do you see? Like one, the health impacts other areas of your life. Do you see this with your, with your clients where, you know, just when they get fit and they lose weight and they get fit and they're, they're, they look better and it impacts their maybe finances and it impacts their relationships. Do you, do you see this with uh, your clients? For sure. I would say the two biggest areas, anxiety reduction okay, and re relationship connection. So anxiety is basically this feeling of lack of control. And when you're working crazy hours, you feel out of control. You feel like I can't keep up with my work. I'm neglecting my family and my home life. And I look in the mirror and I feel like shit. And just this anxiety comes because in every facet of life, we just are missing this control. But when people start to realize I've cracked the code, I can simply and easily fit a lifestyle 
that loses weight, that's one more thing I can control. Now I feel good. I have energy and I actually start to execute better at work. That's another thing I can control. Then I come home and I'm just enthused and it just has this carryover effect into my relationships, my, you know, leadership as a, as a, a parent, my, you know, what I bring to the table to my spouse. So it's really this butterfly effect yeah. starting with control of health. And I think it's the best way to start because it provides you confidence, energy, enthusiasm, and it just reduces anxiety because you feel like you're back in control. So yeah, I would say that those areas of, of improvement are the most meaningful outside of just the weight loss that my clients see. Yeah, stress reduction, lower cortisol level, you know, higher testosterone level for men. So yeah, definitely impacts other areas of their life. And uh, so we, we had this discussion earlier about uh, uh, caloric deficit and restriction. Uh, you you said uh, you're against the word restriction because it sounds obviously restrictive. So um, you're a proponent of uh, caloric deficit. Could you make a case for caloric caloric deficit? And and I read your post where you said that everything related, like when you eat less of anything, that's better for you because less calories. Even uh, intermittent fasting or fasting in general, it's about it should be more about, about deficit than, uh, you know, restriction. So can you make a case for what, what, uh, what you believe in? For sure. So if you consider like the term fad diets, okay. Right. You got keto, Atkins, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, intermittent fast, all these names. Yeah. I actually, I love these diets because they have a sense of belonging. They have these like little boxes you can fit in and it's like, I have clarity. But all of these fad diets, all of these diet categories, they fit under one umbrella. And that umbrella is a caloric deficit. The reason why these diets work is because my body requires X amount of calories to sustain the current weight I have, whatever that weight is. And as long as I have, slightly less than maintenance, I will lose weight. And the way I kind of create that analogy is like your, your bank account. Yeah. If you spend more money than you have, you're going to go into debt. And yeah. that's kind of what we want to do with our weight. We want to spend more calories than we consume. And the best way to do that isn't by spending more calories. It's by just consuming a little bit less. So when I refer to a caloric deficit, there's a thousand ways to make it happen, but as long as our net use and our net intake has a deficit, we will lose weight. Yeah, yeah, I do believe that when you exercise or when you when you when you when you get your nutrition right, you you get your calories down. But I'm from the school of thought where it's more about the hormonal response to food, and insulin being the fat storing hormone. And, uh, you know, the, the quality of your pancreas and the insulin secretion has more to do with uh, how fat is stored in the, in, within the body um, than to do with only with uh, the deficit part. So as an example, um, someone without a metabolic dis disorder uh, would have like 80 milligram per deciliter uh, sugar in their, on their bloodstream. Uh, and if they if they drink an orange juice like a, like a sweet orange juice within within maybe twenty minutes it'll go back to eighty milligram per deciliter because their pancreas have not been affected and the insulin the insulin sensitivity is 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 high or normal but uh, the I mean for someone who has metabolic disorder has uh, insulin resistance their pancreas have been affected over a period of fifteen years it takes. And uh, obviously, they will not get back to the 80 milligram per deciliter immediately. They will stay there to 160. I'm talking about blood sugar now. The, the blood sugar will be 160, 180. It will stay for, for, for an hour or plus. And that's essentially type 2 diabetes. And uh, yeah, so I'm more from the, the, the response to food. But again, there is a, it's a double-edged sword. People get into, just like uh, caloric, counting there's a glycemic 
many people have this glycemic chart and they get into the glycemic glycemic counting so uh, um, so I'm, i for me it's it's what has worked is more of uh, uh, the restriction which is uh, i mean obviously not not the best term but uh, uh, time restricted feeding and intermittent fasting again there's a slight difference time restricted feeding you can eat what you want to uh, in terms of the macros um, but within that frame that time time frame again intermittent fasting again it it includes time restricted feeding but also um, you know keto and high fat and uh, low low or no carb so that has worked for me and I've, I've, I've been more of a proponent of uh, the uh, hormonal response to food but uh, yeah but it's interesting to know your perspective um, yeah um, on this and I've been reading more and more um, because w whenever there's been someone who's been aggressively defending seco calories and calories out they didn't they didn't give an evidence-based answer so I think mm. the first time you, you 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 came with an answer with a reply where you know it's it's more of a moderate view where you say that okay you have to exercise you have to eat right and then you count your calories which I found very different yeah yeah so down to my core yeah I'm on the same team as you are because the more time you can spend in a in a fasted state yeah the stronger your mitochondria are going to become at you know helping with your metabolic process and the stronger your metabolism becomes yeah however my approach and my discussion around the calorie deficit is more so to meet the market where they're at to give a clear understanding to it so i personally in my own life and in a lot of my clients life am a tremendous proponent of intermittent fasting because I think it's really convenient for yeah, it is. A, an executive lifestyle, entrepreneurial lifestyle, business owner lifestyle. If you start to mess with your blood sugar levels early in the day, yeah. you're going to be tied to the kitchen. So yeah. if I have a meal, I haven't, it's 1042 my time right now. And if I have a meal by this point, especially if there's a carbohydrate in it, yes, it's my blood sugar is going to spike. Yeah, my yeah. insulin's going to come out, and then my blood sugar is going to dip. And by yes. noon, I'm not focused on my work anymore. You I'm feel hungry again. So, yeah, exactly. So, there's a couple ways to look at it. One way is by regulating your hormones and being able to keep an even keel of blood sugar. I'm not on this roller coaster where I feel like I constantly need to refeed, which makes it easier to be in a caloric deficit. And that is like something you can really build a long-term lifestyle on. But I'm also a huge proponent of, of doing intermittent fasting and a low carb diet just from the sake of, this, the sake of disease prevention, yeah. allowing the gut to heal during the hours where you're not consuming food is tremendously powerful. But I use the caloric deficit to get my foot in the door yeah. Because as soon as we start talking about regulating hormones and fixing leaky gut syndrome and metabolic syndrome and this, I find that yeah. Yeah. the average person who needs my help the most already tunes out because I sound too much like a doctor. So I must say behind the scenes, everything that you're speaking of in hormonal regulation and trying to reduce processed carbohydrates to regulate blood sugar to make sure that we are as insulin sensitive as possible. I think that's the key to long-term success. But I find that that leading with that point of conversation is almost a little bit too elevated that it alienates the people who need to hear it the most because I find it's not a knowledge issue. Everybody can access the knowledge that you and I have through Google. It's a behavioral issue. Oh, yes. People are so far off of understanding yeah. what is really going on yeah. that I try to meet them with what they're ready to hear. And just like any behavior change, it's like, all right, little tiny baby steps. And if behind the scenes, we start to regulate their hormones without them even knowing it, win-win for everybody. You get a lot of uh, these internal scripts, these narratives that they've had since uh, like they were growing up. 
But I always believed that this was good for me. How come you say it's not good for me? I always believe, you know, why do you say this? <laughs> you, get, you get a lot of, uh, um, you know, um, people saying that. For sure. And yeah. that's a big reason why in order to work with me, there has to be a 12 week commitment because yeah. it takes a long time to break free of this old narrative. Okay. I have clients who are under the belief that by adding more vegetables, all their problems will be solved. Mm. And I try to explain to them, it's not the lack of vegetables that is stealing your health. Mm. It is the surplus of processed carbohydrates, sugars, vegetable oils, yeah. fried foods. It's this surplus that if you just add vegetables on top of that, yeah, it won't it's fix not it helping anymore. anything. Yeah. But on, on day one, when I tell somebody, hey, you know, it's awesome that you added broccoli today, but that's not fixing the problem. I can't, it takes a while to break out of that, that yeah. belief system. It takes a while to break out of the belief system that you got to go and run five miles to burn off the piece of cake you had last night. It's yeah. just, there's so, so many deeply ingrained, unhealthy behavioral relationships with weight gain and weight loss that I find when I to have a conversation with you, we get into the weeds, we get into the science of it, we get excited and like, oh man, somebody else that knows what the heck, you know, hormonal regulation, metabolic syndrome and mitochondria are, this is great, I'm excited. But when you bring that conversation to the person who really needs it, yeah, we're, you know, we're 10 miles ahead. They need to know that sleeping four hours a night is not acceptable before they even have any concept of what a hormone is, you know? It raises your cortisol level and then it makes you hungry and uh, yeah, angry. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, any, any, any questions for me? I mean, um, any questions for me, uh, Kevin? I have a ton of questions. So okay. <laughs> I've, you've, you've impressed me with just kind of like your, your thoughts on it, your philosophy on it. I'm interested to know, like, what is your background with health, fitness, nutrition, what got you into it? How'd you learn it? And what do you plan on doing with this knowledge? Is it just for yourself? Or are you trying to help others with it as well? Um, I started, I mean, you, you, you've been on this journey for more than a decade. And uh, with me, it's been only like 18 months. And I've just mm -hmm. been reading these uh, science journals on NEGM, on British uh, Medical Journal, and books. I mean, I started with Jason Fung books and uh, then progressed to Mark Hyman and you know, those other books. And I think you've done, you, you, you've sort of, you've been certified in primal, primal blueprint here. Yeah. So yeah, through Mark Sisson, uh, Mark, Mark Sisson, sorry, Mark Sisson. And uh, so I, I went through all of these texts and uh, yeah, it generally for me, and I realized that, uh, you know, it was like unplugging from the matrix and you realize that most of the things that you've been told are a lie. And, you know, during those lockdown periods where you, you know, it was just getting bored. So I kept reading and reading and reading. And that's how it, the interest started. So where it began for me is, uh, you know, as you grow older, you see a lot of deaths of, uh, you see, generally people dying, meaning, you know, your, your, your parents or your friends' parents, you know, someone just, and w w the pattern which I noted is uh, um, a, a recurring theme where they said that this person did not have any, uh, medical condition and we don't know what happened you know there was no pre-existing medical condition and that is something I couldn't agree I just couldn't agree like you didn't know that he like he had nothing and then he just goes into you know into the ICU and then he gets on the ventilator and then he dies that cannot that cannot happen so then I started researching at why do people die essentially <laughs> why do people like just just with no pre-existing condition they just go into the ICU and die and that and that's when i realized that there are precondition there are pre-existing conditions there are uh, comorbidities there are issues that they have which they it's just not been diagnosed properly they're extremely insulin resistant there's inflammation there's there's a lot of complex issues in their body there's loss of muscle mass their nutrition isn't right so uh, that's what got me interested into learning more and why people die unexpectedly so that's what sparked my interest and uh, yeah it's been like 18 20 months now where I've been just researching and uh, yeah, and just following uh, 
someone like you on uh, social media where i've got to learn more and more about uh, you know the science behind uh, you know and science behind good health and you know being fit and lean and yeah i'm i'm, I'm much older than you how old are you uh, kevin i'm 29 you're 29 okay i'm 46 yeah, I'm doing something right, man. You look, you look damn good. So, yeah. so, so, yeah, so, I couldn't agree more. I feel like the whole system, from the time that we're born and we're told by cartoon tigers on the TV that the most important meal of the day is breakfast, and it's got to be this sugary cereal. Yeah. And if you if you don't have a big carb loaded sugary breakfast, you're not going to be able to pay attention and learn in school. And then we go to school and we're taught to memorize and follow directions and stay in line and not yeah. think for ourselves. And then we go to the cafeteria yeah. and it's rubbery slices of pizza, cookies and Powerade. And then we finally graduate, we go get a job and there's a vending machine full of soda. And all along, yeah. every time we go to the doctor, all they're looking for is eh, on this chart, you don't meet any numbers that we need to give you a medication yeah, for, yeah. so you must be just fine. Yeah. And then, oh, cholesterol, it's over 200. Now now I can help you. Here's a, here's a statin. Yeah. And it just seems that the system is so reactive and not proactive. And I love getting in the weeds and talking about all the things wrong with it. But quite frankly, I'm a bit defeated when it comes to how do we maybe we give up on the current generation and we say, let's, let's focus on the kids. Let's okay. teach the kids okay. that all the stuff that we've been indoctrinated into just isn't the truth. This is how it's gotta be. This is how you maintain your body. This is how you can be self-reliant your whole life and not fall into the medical system. And then we just wait it out. And in 30 years, all of this old beliefs just get washed out. But until the messages that we send to the kids change, yeah, it is always gonna come down to status quo until there's a health concern. And yeah. then by then you're fighting an uphill battle to, to, to defeat it. And it's, it's frustrating to, like you said, unplug from the matrix and see it yeah. from, a, from a bigger view. And like, how do I save people from this? So my big mission is to really simplify it, meet people where they are, knowing that it's not gonna be perfect on day one, but this is the simplest foundation that you need to know and as they come towards me, continue to refine and refine and refine until everybody can have a conversation about, you know, hormonal regulation, metabolic disease, and, yeah. and really understand how to maintain their own body. But that's my mission. Simplify, get everybody to break out of the reliance on the medical system. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think you're doing, you're, you're, you're contributing to this and uh, like you're helping people and your posts and uh, your message now. It's definitely helping. I mean, it, res it, it does resonate to what, I mean, there's a lot of noise, but it does, there is signal and some people are ready to, to, to receive that signal. So it does resonate with people. There may be a silent majority. They don't really comment or they don't really speak about it, but they're listening. <laughs> they're listening. They're analyzing. So their minds are changing. And just like me, when, when, when I realized what the truth was, the health, about health and health, nutrition, so like my mother, she, she's 71. So her, she's never been lean and uh, energetic. I'm, I don't even, I don't remember her being lean ever. Well, like when I was growing up, she was always fat. Mm. Okay. So she becomes a super lean and uh, energetic now after, uh, in, in just, in just like one year, less than a year actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and like my brothers and uh, some of, some of my friends, some people that I know on social media. So a lot of people have, I mean, it, it's not it's not a huge number, but there are people who do get impacted. They ask you generally, they, or they, they come to you and they ask you what happened. We knew you, you know, you look very different uh, two years ago. So what happened? And that, uh, and they're genuinely interested in changing themselves. So they may be a silent majority. So continue doing your work. I think you're doing excellent work. <laughs> And I love your post, and especially about your the, the mindset and decision fatigue and routine. Your post about routine that resonated with me a lot because I actually thought, you know, to be a sovereign individual, you know, I like this 
one of my values is to be a sovereign individual, not be dependent. You know, you should be able to do things myself, if, even if no one's around. So, uh, uh, so I thought a routine is something which uh, you know, which 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 binds you. So when I read your post, I realized that it actually frees you more than it binds you. And uh, you know, so there was a huge paradigm shift for me. And I may not have commented on that post, but it did change me. You know, I, now I look at routine very differently from what I thought earlier. I remember my wife saying things like, you don't have a routine. And I thought it was a good thing. I thought it was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so now I, I know it. it's, it's something which frees you, makes you more sovereign, makes you more independent rather than binding you. Yeah, but thank you. So thank you for that. Yeah, you you may not have for imagined sure. that this post is going to resonate with someone in Dubai, but it does. It does. A lot of people are reading it, but they don't speak about it or they don't comment. Yeah, but it does it does impact people. That means so much, man. I appreciate it like more than I could even express, and I I couldn't agree more. The idea of routine is just so not sexy. It's not spontaneous. It's boring. But to have the freedom you want the time freedom, the financial freedom, the health freedom, you got to be able to pack in the behaviors and habits that provide that freedom into this tight little packaged up routine that just becomes robotic. And Jocko Willink says it himself. He's, he's the one that I got the real, like the elevator pitch of routine equals freedom from oh, yeah. in, yeah. in one of the, one of his books, but he's on point. Yeah. And I see his tweet at, at 4.30 in the morning, you know, the sweat. On yeah, <laughs> so motivating. Yeah. But also like to comment on the decision fatigue thing, it plays the same role in your nutrition because they did a study on centenarians. Yeah. Communities of people who had higher than average living to a hundred rate, you know, so longevity of life. And one of the things that they found out was a correlate between these people is that the variance in their diet was actually small. It wasn't a very varied diet. It was a very small selective items they would choose from, which if you think about it, you don't have to think much. It's routine. Yeah. It's routine. You don't have to think much. It's not sexy, but it's consistent and it's just easy to choose the right stuff. When if we have a hundred options, yeah. I'm gonna choose ice cream every time. Yeah. You know, if ice cream is an option, I'm choosing it. I'm gonna choose the sexy one every time. But um yeah, man, I appreciate you having me on. I would love to do this more often and really pick topics to pick apart. But before we wrap things up, I shared my mission, which is to, to simplify this, to slowly help those who are, are ready to hear it kind of break free. I'm interested, like, what's your mission? Why are we doing this podcast? What do you want a mission to accomplish? What are we making happen? I just want to make like a 0.25% change and you know, change within myself and then change with, with my family, then my like immediate circle. And uh, yeah, that's how, you know, then the network effect, you know, take, takes over. So, but someone's got to start and uh, it, it doesn't have to be tied into, you know, uh, something which uh, it has to ben be beneficial for me. But generally when I've seen people even my age, yes, yesterday I got, I got a message, someone younger than me who I knew, he just died of a heart attack. And, you know, so when, when, when you see messages like this and then, so I, I, I want to understand more, like what, ex, why exactly, what happened? You know, what, what was he eating? You know, I, I want to get into that science behind why people just, you know, what are they doing to themselves? So, uh, yeah, so my mission really is, is basically to improve my life and the lives of people around me. And then maybe the network effect, it takes place and more people get impacted. So, uh, yeah, very small start very small and then it could pivot into something which uh, i do not know but at this time i do not know exactly where it takes but i want to explore this and uh, i've been um you know i've been wondering if i should be doing a professional course also um, i looked i i checked on the prospectus for phd in health science and uh, yeah it, it's something which you know, it just resonates with me just the, the about health and hormone health and the excuses with people, you know, how to, how to uh, dispel these myths. So, uh, yeah, so I, I don't have a definite idea, but it's just something when you want to do something, you don't know why, but you just want to do it, you know? So, uh, yeah, so that's, that's where I want to begin. Yeah, just help, help myself, help the people around me and then could be to some, 
like a larger larger number yeah that's incredible man i'm i'm happy to be a part of it i'm excited to watch you grow and i think your expectations are perfectly in line to enjoy the journey yeah kind of know 0.25 percent change see where it takes me and just just start that's huge man i'm excited yeah. and i'm excited to do this again soon thank you thank you kevin I look forward course, to seeing your posts. Yeah, keep writing and keep inspiring you. Thank you. No, no doubt, man. Will do. Have a good day. Have a good day. You too. Be good, brother. Thanks. Bye. Bye.